Ira Flato is with us tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Love to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. You are a science journalist and educator, and you're also the host of a pretty cool podcast called Science Friday. And one topic you've discussed several times is dark energy and dark matter, which seems perfect for this time of year, Halloween coming up this weekend. That's why we're doing all of these Halloween themed stories. So what exactly is dark energy and dark matter? You know, that's the really cool thing. We have no idea. <laughs> I mean, dark energy makes up about 68% of the universe. Dark matter makes up about a quarter of the universe. The rest, everything we see, your kids, your garden, your stars, they make up less than 5% of the universe. And wow. so far, astrophysicists can only theorize about what that energy, what that matter, what it all is. You know, we think maybe the, the energy is some anti-gravity-like force, some repulsive force that's sort of pushing away everything in the universe. Uh, only relativity recently discovered, you know, uh, and dark matter, which is uh, a little less mysterious, but we still don't know what that is either. And as we always strive for more answers, information, knowledge, that's got to be frustrating for a lot of these scientists that have been working on this for so long. And what makes dark matter and dark energy so elusive for us scientists? Yeah, that's a great question. Since since dark matter makes up about a quarter of the universe, there must be a lot of it around, right? So we can't see it. <laughs> we know it's there. We can tell it's there because we can feel its presence. It helps explain what keeps galaxies together, forming those spirals that you see. There's got to be more than just gravity in there holding those galaxies together. But we know more about what is not there than what is there because it's not antimatter because we don't see evidence of it annihilating it with, uh, with matter when it finds it. It's not made from protons or neutrons or other standard matter, or we'd know and we'd see it. And we can rule out a favorite idea of science fiction folks. Perhaps there are lots of small black holes in the gaps. And since you can't see small black holes, maybe there are a lot of them over there filling up the universe. Nope. Because if there were small black holes around, we'd see this special thing called the lensing effect. And that is where light is being bent around the black hole, comes around like a lens. We should see a lot of them. We don't see very many of them. So there are not a lot of black holes making up dark matter or dark energy. Hmm, and that's a whole other topic for a different day, black holes. That's it, this stuff out in space. There's so much of it that is so fascinating and, and quite complex. And, and being an educator yourself, how do you try and explain this in a way to, to someone who, who might not have a lot of background? Well, you know, the bottom line in science here is to understand how the universe started and how it will end. In other words, we all want to know where we came from and where we're going. And the dark stuff may tell us something about the beginnings, like the Big Bang, and whether our universe continues to cycle between a Big Bang, then expand out, come back in from gravity, and start all over again. Or maybe we just finish in a cold, dark space that expands out forever. Dark matter, because of its gravity-like properties, explains how the gases in space can come together and maybe form another Big Bang in the, in the presence of dark matter. But the dark energy tells us, no, we may be expanding out again into that cool, dark space. And we so far, we don't know what's going to win. It looks like right at this moment, that expansion is going to happen forever. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool to talk about, don't you think? It, it really is. I, I, I always uh, get fascinated with space just because it's so vast and, and there is so much that we don't know. And, and with such so little known on this particular particular topic, it seems like there's a lot of controversy or arguments or just even just plain discussion on how we proceed on trying to get some of these answers. Have you found that to be true? Absolutely. You know, with so many unknowns about what the dark stuff is, all kinds of theories have been proposed. And who's to say they're wrong? I mean, maybe Einstein was right when he said that empty space is not really empty. His theory of gravity allows for more space to come into existence and just out of no, nowhere. He once proposed and then deleted. 
a, 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 an equation a, a, in his theory of relativity that predicted dark energy. He called it the biggest blunder of his life. And now we know maybe he was right. Einstein had trouble understanding dark, dark energy. So I tell people, look, if Einstein didn't get it, don't feel ashamed that you can't figure it out either. So that's a great he, way of putting it's, it. It's that mysterious, you know, it, it really is. And so we kind of touched on this a little bit already. Why is it so important to get some of these answers on, on what it is? Well, I think one of the reasons that I love talking about cosmology and dark stuff is that it gives me a chance to quiz scientists about it and, and hear them say, and I like it when they say, I'm stumped. I really don't know what it is. And for me, I don't know the answer is a very satisfying answer to questions in science, because most of science is really based on I don't know. Science experiments are built on getting answers wrong most of the time, then eliminating what's not needed. I think it really is useful for people to understand uh, how we know about the universe and that it's always changing. Uh, that science really is not a book of answers that sits there and you go look up the answer, but it's actually a means of investigating things. And when the evidence changes, your, your mind has to change too to uh, get at the truth. And that's how science works. Ira, I agree entirely. This is such a cool topic. And I thank you for being here to help discuss it. I hope you have a happy Halloween. You too. Thank you. Hey, AccuWeather fans, if you want to see more videos like this, check out some of our other ones right here. And if you like what you see, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more from AccuWeather.